know, a few years ago, I have a heart surgery, and I am now living what I call my second life. But at the same time, it's not easy to move from one country to another. This is not my phone. <laughs> this is another phone. It's not easy to move to one country to another country. That means that you have to live a second life. For those of you, you are coming to class again after a few years. And maybe you are living your second life or your third life. You don't know, right? Because when you change careers, this is what happens. So I'm going to give you today what I call my five tips to survive your second life. But I'm sure that you can use it in your first life. The first one is called thanks. And I want to use here uh, a, 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 a lighthouse. Every morning, when I see myself in the mirror and I see a big scarf, I give thanks. In my case, I do thanks to God because I am alive. Professor Morris, you know him? Yep. He told me this the other way. Wow, every morning I, I give thanks to God because I can walk. He has a metal, metallic knee, and he, you know, from time to time, he's sore. And he said, wow, yes, you give thanks because you can walk. I give thanks because I am alive. So one of the, the, the tricks is to be grateful to what you have, to who you are, to what you do, because there is a reason for that. You are in this class for a reason. You're going to get a degree for a reason. What are you going to do with that degree? Well, you need to find out. But this is important. I see many people around me that are suffering in jobs that they don't want, in professions that they don't want. But I tell them, you know what? You have to see the positive side of the equation. You have to give thanks because in that way, you will reduce your stress, reduce your heart rate, right? And then at least have mind to think what to do. My second tip, of course, you know it very well, is called vision. And I tell people, you know what? You have to row your own canoe, right? <coughs> Some people say, yeah, this is your canoe. And you have to row your own canoe in the direction of your dreams, or in the direction of your vision. You have to know where you're going. It took me five years to come to the United States after I made the decision. I was telling my son yesterday that I did a trip to Dallas, Texas, and then went to Miami. And I, I saw a driver license office. And he said, oh, let me see if I can get a driver license. I have a driver license from Massachusetts. Oh, what else? He said, say that. So I entered, I took the exam, and I failed. So I took the, the, the booklet, went home to my cousin, and said, I, I want to do this again. Let me read this to see what is the difference. And then in the afternoon, I went back, I did the exam, I passed, and in those times, you can, you were able to do the, the driving test at the same time. So I did my driving test, I got my driver's license, 1989. It's like, cool. For five years, I didn't use my driver's license because I was in Venezuela waiting for the company, waiting for the moment to come back to the United States. When I finally came with my working visa, and I went to my insurance, to the car, to, insure, to, do, to buy insurance for my car. The person told me, wow, you have been five years without a ticket. I will give you a discount. Oh, great. <laughs> you see, for me, it was important to have that vision to, I want to come to the United States, and I work for five years in different places or trying to accomplish my vision that finally I did it, and I got the benefit of having a license with five years with no ticket. So the vision, your vision is very important. Keep it in your mirror, what you want to accomplish when you get what you want. And this is very related to goals. This Saturday, some of you are going to be on the top of your mountain, right? Mm -hmm. You're climbing your mountain here somehow, going off. <laughs> wow, that's my goal, go there, right? And what happens when you are at the top of the mountain? Nothing. You have to go down 
and go and find your next mountain, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are going your next goals? You already accomplished one. Now you need to accomplish another one. And then another one. I already told you, it took me 20 years between my master's degree and my doctoral degree. But I finally did it. I said, wow, 20 years and money, yes. And I tell people, are you gonna do a master's degree? Yeah, but I don't have the money. Hey, look at it as an investment. So when you're paying your, your, your loan, you have to think, wow, I am paying my investment because it's gonna give you some rewards. Anyhow, you have to climb your own mountain. Find your mountain and enjoy the journey because that journey going on, by the way, if you really have been in a real mountain, it's not easy. You have to go with your backpack all the way up. But once they were there and you see on the distance your next vision, well, it's time to go back. Go down, relax, think, and focus. Go up. My number four topic here, you're not alone. You are in a team. You have a family, you have a friend, you have a wife, you have a husband, you have a support group. Get a support group to let them know what you're doing. What is your vision? I, I, I told to everybody, my, this is my goal, I want to go to the United States, and I did it. When I started my doctoral, I have people around me that was against my degree. You don't need three letters after your name. What well, you gonna get? Another death? Why are you going back to school? You are gonna let your family, your friends out because you're gonna be focused on the school. Many people put me down. So what I did, I found five friends and my wife that always went with me supporting all the process. And these five friends were doing the same thing. And we checked each other. When the first two graduated, they said, oh my God, I wanna be number three. And I was number three. Later, the other one graduated and they hired me because he's now a dean in another university, and then we have friends, and we check each other to see how we're doing. Because what happened? When you're doing your vision, your goals, you're gonna find obstacles. You're gonna find a lot of things. Oh, you're gonna out of money, you lost the job, and you, what you wanna do is to be sure that you are there. So, and the best thing that you get is the people around you. So, surround yourself with positive people that are gonna lift you. Don't surround yourself with people that are gonna put you down. And this is why, by the way, it was very important after my heart surgery, I found all the support of friends, people praying for me, and still I see people around me and say, oh my God, I was praying for you. Oh my God, thanks, because all these people supported me. Last night, I was talking to a guy that is, uh, by the way, talking about the, your article about obesity, um, that many people is, getting fat. And this guy was telling to him, you know, you, are, you, you have to be careful because you don't look healthy. Yeah, I know, I have to eat less. But what are you doing? Are you doing something? No, well, but the thing is, nobody's helping me at home. Well, I am going to bother you. I'm gonna whip you to be sure that you are eating less, that you're buying the right things because we don't wanna lose you. With the process that you're doing right now, I think that I'm gonna go to your funeral. And you know that I am very direct when I want to say things, right? Say, oh my God, you're kidding. Well, you know what? I am living my second life and you're losing your first life. So it's very important that you have support group. Finally, the last word that I like in my list is change. Manage change. Control change. I always draw in my first class and my last classes that life it's a cycle. And this is for my electronic background, right? Or for my Navy background, so because it can be also a, a wave. Enjoy the wave. The good part about this wave is that when you are in the bottom of the wave, no matter how bad you are, how you feel, no job, miserable, you're gonna go up. There's no way you're gonna stay down there. Something's gonna happen to you, and you have to believe. You need to change what you're doing, get your degree that like you're doing here, and go off. 
but be careful. Because when you're in the top of the wave, you can go down, right? <laughs> uh, what is important is that you learn what happened, how to cope when you are down. When you are without a job, when you are between jobs or uh, lost in the family or something like this, you have to be prepared. This is the Boy Scout motto that, that you, you have to be prepared for everything. I saw a, a construction sign and I took a picture because I like it because this is what I feel right now. And the sign said, be prepared to stop. Are you seeing these people that are telling you slow and they have a big thing? Be prepared to stop. And I told my wife, you know what? It's important. We live a life thinking that we're going to be forever here in this planet. So one day, no matter what you do, you're going to reach the finish line and you're going to stop. Are you prepared? Tough, right? But this is the, how you manage your up and downs of life. And by the way, and these five points is that I want you to take with you today, this year, this, this semester. No matter what you do in life, no matter that career path you take, remember that you are not alone, you are part of a team, and most important, you are part of me guinea pigs. So see you in graduation, see you next time, and enjoy the summer. Thank you.